Hey, Errol, um, you know, with such heavy mutual respect between you and Terrence, and without any verbal slinging of the mud, just off skills alone, can this fight crack a top five grossing boxing fight of all time? Uh, definitely. If, you know, if, if people know Terrence's mentality and know my mentality, you know, we don't really talk that much. If somebody say something to us, then, you know, we'll talk and we'll, we'll enjoy it. But other than that, is you know, we let our ability talk. You got a lot of guys who, you know, talk a lot of crap and they get in the fight, it's either born or they're not even fighting, you know. So if you know my style, you know his style, you know, there's no, you know, back down. If, if I push him, I know he's going to push harder. If he push me, yeah, I know I'm going to push harder. So I feel like me and Terrence, this is just, me and Terrence put together it's a, just a recipe for, for a great fight. I mean, we both got old school mentality and we both come to the fight. So we got everything online, got everybody watching. You know, we're going to put on a great show and a great performance. It's just, you know, the people got to gotta want to fight. That's the only way we're going to get bigger fights and get other guys fighting each other and get the number one versus the number two fighting each other. If, you know, when we fight, people come out and watch the fight, people order the fight. Cause like I say, people in the suits look at it, they're gonna be like, man, like people excited when when the top guys fighting each other, people get excited, people wanna watch, people wanna tune in. But if people are not ordering the fight, people are not coming to the fight, tuning in, then you know, why not fight somebody ranked in the top ten or fifteen? If I'm gonna get paid the same, I mean, like you showing people when we fighting each other with a risk, it comes a huge reward. Gotcha. One more question. Um, does yesterday the uh Tyson Fury Francis and Ganu fight was announced? Does that a fight like that do more to help or hurt boxing in your opinion? Um, I mean, I mean. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's an individual thing. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to fat in his pockets and Francis' pockets, too. So I feel like that's more of a, a money play than anything. That's like Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. So that's, that's more of a money play. So, hey, kudos to them for getting the fight done and uh, – I think the belts, I don't know, the, the, the belts, the, the people who uh, make, a lot of, make a lot of the rules, sanction it, the WC did, so they fight each other, so, hey. All right, great. Thanks for those questions, Mark. Our next question is going to come from Ben Baby with ESPN. Ben, please unmute yourself and you can ask your questions. Hey, Errol, hope, uh, hope you're doing well. I appreciate you taking the time. And kind of it's interesting you mentioned the sanctioning bodies because I was going to ask about that. Obviously, in that presser, um, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, I guess in the first one you talked about the 3% fees and all that stuff. And, and over the years, there's been a lot of conversation about should there be one national federally regulated sanctioning body? Do you, what, would, what would your thoughts be on that? Do you feel like there would be a lot of support is instead of having maybe four sanctioning bodies, having one that's federally regulated that kind of runs and oversees the sport? Um, I mean, it can be, it can, it, I'm not worried about it being, you know, three, three sanctioned by the four sanctioned by, but it's just a lot, like all these junior titles and, you know, they make the secondary builds and, and just make intern builds and, you just got a lot of bills and people paying fees on it too. So it's just, I feel like it's too many bills in boxing basically watered it down because people win the world titles and they're not earning none of the world titles. So I feel like it's just been watering it down boxing and just, you know, just made it. I mean, if everybody can get a title, you can get a title easy. You be with the right promoter and get a title. And it's, it's, I feel like that's not right. You got guys who really work hard and been fighting the best competition. It doesn't need to be in secondary builds. 
got to make these guys, you know, fight each other. Just like, you know, me and Terrence, me and Terrence doing and the other guys too. So, I don't know. I'm not going to really speak on the bills to, to, to after my fight. That's all I'm focused on right now. But it is, it is a discussion that need to be talked about. You know, I, I get, you know, you got retired fighters talking about it, but it's going to be more on the, on the fighters that acting now to talk about it and to, to make a change because everybody need to be held account accountable, not just the boxers need to be held accountable. The promoters need to be held accountable. The managers need to be held accountable and the sanctioned bodies need to be held accountable too. Right. And uh, last question for me, I appreciate you saying that and sharing that, you know, you've, I think I've talked to you about, you know, Terrence now, it seems like for years, a lot of people have, you know, when you were coming up, um, you know, even going back to 2018, did you feel like you needed, or, or when you look at the the scope of the legacy of your career, it wouldn't really be complete until you faced him and had a victory against him. How much has that kind of been in your mind as you've kind of moved up, conquered belts, knowing that Terrence is in the division and knowing what a fight against him could mean for your legacy? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I want to fight him because I feel like he was the guy that's my dancing partner. You know, he's the guy I need. And the other way around, you know, I'm the guy that, that he needs, especially if we talk about legacy-wise and boxing-wise. I feel like if I didn't fight him, you know, his name will always live a stain on just my name. And if he didn't fight me, my name will always live a stain on his name, you know, regardless if, if he wanted to say it or not. You know, this is what it was, what it is, because where I go, people, you know, always bring up, you know, hey, when me and Terrence Crawford are going to fight each other. And it's probably vice versa, too. So, hey, we just, we got to make it happen just for, for, for our sake, you know, just our legacy and for the young guys, man, just shut them away and show them that, you know, it is dope. As long as the bit is right, the best fighting the best. You know, it's dope, but, you know, the business got away. And I think that's why this fight probably took a long time because, you know, on some parts, he didn't agree to a lot of things. And I didn't agree to a lot of things. And um, I think the fight got made because we, you know, dropped our egos and our pride and got on the phone and talked to each other to hash things out and, um, and got the fight made. Thank you, Errol. Thank you for those questions, Ben. Uh, next up, Jake Donovan from Boxing Scene. Jake, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Thanks, Andrew. What's going on, Errol? Um, I know you mentioned. Uh, no um, I know you mentioned that you know you had to put your egos that not you had to you willingly put your ego aside. You, you made the sacrifice to stay out the ring. So we found out when we did when the fight was made. When were you confident that this fight was going to happen, especially with everything you went through last year when you were pretty much left hanging? Um, basically when we got, I wouldn't say it was the last hurdle, but it was the biggest hurdle and it was just, uh, the splits and I basically, why not basically, I told him just, you know, just give it to him. So, so like, after I said that, that's what, you know, got to fight. That was what got to fight, man. That was the biggest hurdle. 